Good afternoon and welcome to the LMP Event Forum podcast. Today we are joined by the boss behind LMP. It is not Mr. Negative himself, as we all believe, Mr. Spicer. It is the fabulous Mrs. Spicer. Good afternoon, Lizzie. Hello, you okay? Yeah, you? Yeah, we're all good, thanks. And sat next to her at the moment on this podcast is Mr. Negative. Good afternoon, Mr. Paul Spicer. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm joking. I'm good. <laughs> So, just as always, Paul, as we do on these podcasts, what's the week been like? We, we're getting mixed messages out there, aren't we, at the moment? Yeah, uh, massively mixed messages. Some great, some not so great, and some still no clearer than when we were a couple of weeks ago. We've got indications that hotels are due to start opening from July, which will give an indication that some form of conferences and seminars will start back to a certain extent. Um, the announcement of cinemas starting to open the week after that, which is great. And then there's been a few other announcements. I think the first car show, I literally saw this today, it hasn't gone out on the forum yet, but by the time you're listening to this, announced that a car show in England should be going out at an expo in August into September, so that's great news. There's stuff to do. Theatres still don't know where they stand. I've seen lots of bad news with certain theatres with uh, layoffs and stuff, especially like the Birmingham Hippodrome. So it's been lots of bad news as well. It's been a very mixed bag this week. There is progress, we're getting there. In Shropshire itself, we've seen three events. One of them's a double night, so I suppose you could make it four events, a driving events at the Westmead Showground. That's an interesting concept. I can see the music one. I can see the show one. There's a comedy one, which I'm waiting to see how that'll work. Tickets for the music one sold out within about two or three days. I think people just want to get out there, don't they? Some people are taking the route that, yes, things feel like they're going back to normal. There's nothing normal about what's going on right now. Yes, the shops reopened this week and crazy people queuing for hours even before the shops open to get stuff. That's not normal. But people have a need for stuff. And one of those needs is live events, music. There's a big, a big hole in, that, in their lives and that hole needs to be filled. And hopefully that is the first step with events like this that are very creative on how they're doing it. We'll meet that need. Talking of gap in the diaries and everything, Lizzie, you've had Mr. Spice at home there for quite a while, haven't you? How's life been as the event's widow? Well, it has been interesting because usually we don't see half as this much of each other. Considering we only got married in February, this is like our honeymoon. It's been nice to actually spend some quality time with each other. But at the same time, I think we both value our own space at times. Paul's been locked in the kitchen on his Zoom calls. And I've taken myself off to my office and I've been at the unit a lot, especially this week and last week. It's kind of woken back up. It's different. It's going to be weird when he goes back. What is your business, Lizzie? Tell everyone on the forum what your business is. So I do print signage and graphics. Uh, specialising in vehicle graphics but I also do graphics for exhibitions and events so I've worked with LMP on a few projects which is exciting. We've worked together in the past but at the moment I seem to be the busy one for a change and Paul's been at home doing all the forum and his Zoom calls and Xboxing. And of course yeah I mean obviously most businesses suffered and <laughs> the fact that you can you have pivoted your business and, and are doing different things in it. it must be an advantage obviously and as a couple, that does take the pressure off, doesn't it? Because when neither of you are working, it's, it's intense all the time. You're waiting for the next job to come in. But it allows Paul to relax and do what he needs to to prepare to go back out there. But Lizzie, when he does go back out there, it's going to be worrying, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, he's going to be busy again. But I think with this lockdown period, it's given us all a, an idea of slowing down a bit and not working as crazily as we were before. I keep telling Paul that he can't carry on working the hours that he does work. Take a step back a little bit and, and let some more engineers do some more bits because working six o'clock in the morning till four o'clock in the morning and then coming home and doing it all again isn't a really very good good healthy lifestyle choice. <laughs> so it is going to be weird when, when he goes back but hopefully we're going to find some sort of middle ground where he's not as chaotic as he was before and how worried are you about him being with say 10,000 other people at a massive event the coronavirus I don't 
know if I'm going to be going to any events myself. Hopefully venues and businesses will have put in enough safety measures to uh, protect ourselves and if we all use a bit of common sense and keep ourselves distanced and safe and clean it's worrying but I think it should be in the forefront of people's minds when we go back everyone is going to be worrying about it hopefully people will be very aware of like not hugging or handshaking and it's going to be a different world when we go back I think it's just how we deal with it really it has been a theme of the podcast hasn't it Paul is that people want to get back we want to get back safely and not just for us on the ground who are at the events, but also the families of the people on the ground, isn't it? Again, you, you think about it, you take a typical event, you've got to consider all the people that attend it, their circle of people, their families. You've then got the people that work at the p- potential venue, all their, all their friends, all their families, all the people that are behind the scenes making it happen. It's, it's a massive pool of people things could affect. So if there was to have, be another spike or break out, it, it, it's not just going to affect a certain group of people. It's going to affect all people at that event. People don't realise this. They see people at an event and don't realise there's always a backstory to everybody there working. There's a backstory. And usually it's given up family time, long hours. And obviously now, that coupled with the worry of the virus, you know, there's always worry when you're at an event. You know, people need to start thinking, you know, dealing with a small business because we're not corporate businesses. We're, we're small businesses where usually every single thing we do affects the family either positively or negatively doesn't it yes i've had lizzie mention earlier there's been a couple of times where i work all hours god sends because i want to be make sure the money comes in and not just looking after myself and looking after lizzie and whatever I'm looking after the businesses in that respect but working 22 hour days back to back is not the answer and even before i met lizzie i had a thing where i nearly ended up killing myself because of the hours that I was doing which is just ridiculous being in this situation that we are at the moment has put a new perspective on things. Now, Lizzie said, I'm not going to try and be as busy as possible. That's not technically true. Uh, I think the correct way to word that is to say, I am going to be very busy, but in a different way. And I'm going to be in a way that is, I am going to be busy running events from my office or headquarters or from wherever I need to be, but I'm not going to be out on every single event. That's why I've got team members to do that. That's why I'm going to have more team members to do it because I've got interest from other people that want to be involved. I hit 40 this year, and obviously, as we've said, we got married this year. I don't particularly want to be out doing 22-hour days, five days, six days, seven days a week. I'm quite happy to do the odd one of them a month. That's not serving me best, and it's not serving my lifestyle or my family lifestyle anymore. And that, and this, this time of being in lockdowns helped me to realise that. As you both admit, you're both in the honeymoon period, Lizzie, aren't you, of marriage. But do you think this, this has made people realise what they actually do have at home, what they need to work hardest at? Because in general, in life, we have been busy, busy fools in a way, and we've kind of concentrated on the supply and what we, what, you know, what we think we need to do rather than what we've actually got, isn't it? And, and obviously, you know, that you've, you two have seen that very early on. Yeah, I mean, definitely this time, that this last three months, I think a lot of families have been given a gift almost. There's the virus to worry about. Yes, there's money and businesses to worry about. But in a way, it's allowed families to spend quality time with each other that they wouldn't have got. People with young children like yourselves, spent some time with your your kids while they've not been at school, you've not been at work, you've been able to make memories and and they're going to last a lifetime. So in a way, if you look at the positives of what's happened, People have been given the gift of time for the last three months, really. And I mean, I know some people have been separated from their families, unfortunately. And that's a sad thing when people can't hug their moms and dads and things. But families who are lucky enough to be locked in together, I think it's been really important for them to reassess, you know, work isn't everything. And, you know, there are more important things in life, like family and spending time together going for walks together finding indoor crafts and things to do I mean there's been all sorts going on that people have done that's really lovely to see on Facebook and things that um, families have spent some really nice time together it's given me time to choose which my favorite child is to be honest with you but <laughs> <laughs> or, or the opposite or some families may not have enjoyed it but <laughs> no definitely agree with you and i'd like also to think now that we're a cleaner country and i don't mean just the environmental i also think 
personal hygiene. And me and Paul discussed this several times, Lizzie. Hand sanitizer is one of our major tools of the, the bag because when you're touching decks or you know equipment, there's nothing worse than having sticky hands or, or something. So I've always used it, but now everybody's going to use it. It's going to help people are, are now sanitizing a lot more when they're out. They're aware of coughing over people, for example, and what the damage that can cause. So I actually think we're going better to a cleaner, healthier environment, both working and the environment itself, because obviously we've seen the benefits of that. You know, obviously you've come on the podcast today as Paul's other half, and, and it is important that we do recognise that there's always a team behind the, the team on site. But Lizzie, obviously you've your exhibition event side, have you had to pivot on that for your business? Well, with the whole COVID signage debacle, um, my business has actually been surviving by A, selling things on eBay because everyone's online shopping, but B, the, the signage side of it has been social distancing, floor graphics, posters, banners. So really it's kind of, although the exhibitions and normal signage work has stopped, I think it's like opened a new avenue and it's given people who kind of knew what I did but didn't really understand it um, a new understanding of what I do like for example my hairdresser who obviously had an idea of what I did she's now ordered a load of banners and leaflets off me and she says she's gonna keep ordering off me going forwards which is brilliant whereas before before she needed the specific signage that I'd promoted on social media for the pandemic that she didn't really know. A lot of businesses have had to think outside the box to come up with ways of making money. But I think the signage industry in particular has been kind of handed a bit of a, a little product line on a, on a platter because there's gonna be that many businesses who need the signage, who, you know, if you've got even one employee, you've got to do all your social distancing and your posters. And that's without the government even bringing in official guidelines on what you have to have yet. So God knows what's going to happen there. But yeah, the signage industry, I think, has been quite lucky with regards to what's been going on, as opposed to the events industry, which has really had a, a really, really tough time. And I feel for people in that industry, I really do. Well, us in the events industry now need you more than ever, because the signage has to be clear. In the past, we've done, and Paul probably agree, we've done signage for signage sake, just to tick a box. A lot of times it's not meant anything. It's only meant anything if it's been needed. Now it needs, it's meant to be there and it's needed there and it's a hell of a change. We now rely on you to guide us in how to do that. I mean, one-way systems, for example, we spoke about it the other day. You know, that's yep. going to be quite important, Lizzie. So I think now you're, you're, you've become, rather than, a, a needed part or you know we need we need to do this with a wanted part because we want events to be safe so i think you know that's that's major but paul on on from lizzie's side how worried have you been about lizzie being at work and delivering etc and things like that during the, the time in the first couple of weeks it wasn't too much of an issue because lizzie was pretty much like everyone else on lockdown she wasn't going to be going out dealing with clients as the weeks went on it was quite obvious that she was getting the demand let's just say there's been some interesting conversations about what some of the clients have needed her to do or where they needed her to go and we've had to say to the clients and we've had conversations between Lizzie and me saying that client needs to be more realistic because they're expecting you to go to this place on the other side of the country and at the time there was this obviously non-essential travel was like a thing and I was saying if you get pulled over by the police are the police going to understand that you're supposed to be putting this sign up for this person? And I was like, I honestly don't think they would. The client needs to work with you to understand that, that that's happening. As obviously things have been more relaxed and time's gone on, it's a lot easier. Obviously, we have a full team of people in our unit, including um, Lizzie's team and our team. Lizzie, in some ways, has kind of had the luxury that uh, she's had the unit to herself so she can crack on with the work and, and the jobs because, as you know, we're not operational as yet so none of our team are there to disturb her and Lizzie's got people working from home so I'm not too worried right now and the interaction the way she's dealt with it and the way that she's rejigged our offices we've had to put certain things in place to make it safe but the way that she deals with customers technically she doesn't actually see her customers so it's actually worked out really well I'm not not that worried now 
Yeah, when they drop off a vehicle, it's kind of like, give me the keys and go away. And then I'll let you know when when it's ready and you can come and have it back. So, yeah, there's not a lot of customer interaction at the moment. No one's really actually physically stepping through the front door, as it were. No. They're out on the forecourt and that's where they stay. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing going forward, is it? Because there's nothing worse than somebody watching over you when you're trying to work. But it also, the, ra the random thing that we get, and I, again, I'm not used to this. When we moved a couple of years ago, we were in an office that you needed to book an appointment if you wanted to get in and you couldn't just walk through the front door. Now we're more on a typical kind of training state. It is still baffling to me, but I understand because this is how it works for people. People just randomly walk in without an appointment or anything. I get that because they're, they're coming to check you out to say, oh, look, I, I need this. Can you help me with this? I'm not knocking that. That's fine. But those people can't do that anymore because it doesn't work like that now. It is a case of you need to book an appointment or if you think you're just going to knock on the door and be let in, don't work like that, pal. I've put a big yeah. sign on the door saying you will not be allowed in without an appointment. So, yeah, I've yeah. done our own signage as well. And that's important. Well, look, it's great. It's fascinating to listen to a couple who work very, very hard, who spend a lot of time apart, who have recently got married. And I did have to remind him on the last podcast, Lizzie, that he has said, I do this year. I don't know whether you heard that. If not, have a listen back, Lizzie. I'm not going to say any more on that Mr Spicer but no it has been fascinating because it is important so there is always a team behind the team please while you're out and about do respect that do ask people how their families are how they're coping how they've got through this virus people are suffering and people are getting through it and keeping the economy going thank you very much for listening thank you Mr and Mrs Spicer for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you both it's been a great pleasure to listen to Paul while he's not on a specific subject as well uh, and he can actually be fully positive because he's got the super <laughs> Lizzie behind him. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.